Prayer can easily become boring when it's seen as a routine on your to-do list, which is you want to carry it out to not feel guilty or you want to carry it out so that you will not be sanctioned out of fear. But the right way to view it should be an intentional, intimate time that you have with God, an intimate act or communication you have with God. Today, I want to speak about exploit the power of prayer, which is make good use of the power of prayer. Until you realize the true power in prayer, you'll never be able to exploit that power. The true power of prayer is in true friendship with God. As Jesus told the disciples, I call you not servants no more, but I call you friends. What do real friends do? Real friends communicate intimately, vulnerably. They have sincere moments and they know each other so well. In order to portray this point about exploiting the true power of prayer, I have three considerations for you. Number one is, why do you pray in the name of Jesus? Number two, how do you pray effective and earnest prayer? Number three, how do you pray without ceasing? Let's look at the point one. Why do you pray in the name of Jesus Christ? The Bible says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do that. If you ask yourself so well, why do you pray in the name of Jesus? That's just like a question I would like to pose to you. Are you just praying in the name of Jesus because it's a religious thing that you grew up to see and it's a good ending to your prayer? So that at the end of your prayer, you are like in the name of Jesus. Or it's a good beginning to your prayer. Do you really understand the impact and the power that this carries that you are praying in the name of Jesus? And when I was thinking about this, I thought about the idea of bills on me. It's as if you tell someone, go to the store, pick anything you want, bills on me, pick it on my name. And what Jesus actually did was... He went to the cross and sacrificed himself for us. And it's like him making the way for us to go to God freely, such that he's like telling us, bills on me. Make your prayer in my name. I've paid the bills for your deservedness. You don't deserve to go to God. You don't deserve to be blessed by God. I have already paid the bill. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Secondly, why you pray in the name of Jesus should come from the understanding of the substitutionary work that Jesus did on the cross. Jesus became us so that we can become him. Like scripture says that he took our sins and we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are not righteous out of our own doings. We don't have self-righteousness because all of that is like dumb. It means nothing. So all we have is because he substituted himself and replaced us. He took her place. So when the scripture says, anything you ask in my name, It is like you are praying as Jesus. When you are going to God, you are praying as him. You are not just praying as yourself no more. You are praying in the name of Jesus, as if Jesus is the one praying. In a situation where you were to represent your boss in the office and your boss is like, go and represent me in my name. People are expecting your boss and then you are the representative. You'll be given treatment not based on you, but based on your boss's name. If anybody in a top organization were to send you to go get something in their name, either they give you a written note or a word of mouth, you are representing them. So you are treated as them. You are not treated as yourself. So what can we learn from this? If you were to pray as Jesus, how would Jesus pray? We can learn this from the prayer that Jesus made when he went to Lazarus' grave. Most times in our human mind, we might think that praying to God in the name of Jesus might be like begging God and having to do something to deserve or to have his attention. We don't need to catch God's attention because we already have his attention. So the scripture said here, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. This is such a bold, confident prayer. And it's showing us whenever we come to God, We can come boldly. Like scripture has admonished us to come boldly to the throne of grace to receive. Because we are not just praying in our name. We are not praying in our weakness. We are not praying as we are. We are praying in Jesus' name. So thirdly, to buttress this point, name actually represents character, represents authority and reputation. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, it means that his name is the filter for our prayer. Which means every prayer you make as a believer, it will be filtered in his name. Is it in line with his character? Is it in line with the reputation of God? Is it in line with his authority? Is it in line with God's will? That is the filter 
in Jesus' name. So it is not just like a stamp on your prayer after praying and you are like stamp it on the name of Jesus. Anything cannot go. That's why scripture says that sometimes we ask and we don't receive because we ask amiss. We ask out of God's will. We ask for our own gain, our own pleasure. Which James said, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, it means we are enforcing the will of God in our lives. It means we are going to God to agree with everything that he has said about us. And if you ask yourself, what did God say about you? If you are sick in your body, he says you are healed. If you have any issues, there is solution in the word of God. And you have to pray according to the word of God. Knowing that when you pray in the name of Jesus, there is so much power released. You are not standing in your authority, but in his authority. You are not standing in your character so that you will not feel like I am not worthy to come to God. You are standing in his character. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The number two consideration is how do you pray effective and earnest prayer? In James chapter 5, we see the scripture say, The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a man as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, None fell for three and a half years. Then, when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crop. Now, how did Elijah pray earnestly? Because the scripture says here he made an earnest prayer. In First Kings chapter 17 verse 1, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. That was what the scripture called earnest prayer. Elijah prayed earnestly and there was no rain. So what are we told in this about earnest prayer? Earnest prayer is not about how passionate you can be to sweat and to shout and to yell because God is not deaf. Earnest and fervent prayer is a prayer of faith that agrees with the will and the word of God. It was in the will of God that the things that were happening in Israel in the time of Ahab should stop. And Elijah operated in the will of God. And when he spoke just that declaration, it happened because it was in line with faith and the will of God. He said, at my word, no rain will fall. But when it came again, the Bible says, and he prayed again. Now this next prayer, which we emphasize much more, is not what the scripture called earnest prayer. Because sometimes it feels like in the human mind, Earnest prayer is until you spend like 50 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours or a certain amount of time to pray before it becomes earnest or fervent. Because we see fervency as passion. But fervency in the word of God means active prayer. A prayer that is active produces wonderful results. Which means Elijah said just that word and wonderful results were produced. Why? Because it was in faith. And you don't need to start thinking about how high is the heaven. So you need to shout till God hears in heaven. That's kind of ignorance. Because there's no amount of shout that you can shout that will make God hear. There's no amount of passion that you can generate or heat in your body that will bring out sweat that will make God hear. It is not about that. I'm not saying that those things, if someone is praying passionately and have to sweat, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but do not have it in your mind that that is what is earnest prayer. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 that God's ears are not heavy for him to hear our prayers, neither are his eyes dim, but that the sin is the barrier. But in today's dispensation, your sin is no longer a barrier. The barrier of sin has been removed. Why? He said, you have the forgiveness of sins. You have been made clean once and for all. The precious blood of Jesus, which was shed for you, has cleansed you of all your sins. So there is no more barrier for God to hear you. There's no more barrier for you to pray effectively to God. You just need to be in faith and agree with the will and the word of God. That is how to pray effective and earnest prayer. The third and last point is, how do you pray without ceasing? Scripture says, pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? It is to have a lifestyle of prayer. Live your life as if it is a prayer. Which means, it's what the scripture says, acknowledge God in all your ways. It is not like, I need God here and I don't need him there. 
It is not like remove God from this. Let's not talk about God here. It is like God is the center of everything in my life. That is a prayerful life. Like I'm living a life of faith. I'm not just living a life of the now in my own understanding. I'm living relying in God. Pray without ceasing actually means do not have a suspension time for prayer. It is just like you saying, I've communicated enough in this relationship. So we'll just stop communicating. Let's have a break from communicating. It means you're stopping the flow of life in that relationship because that is actually what gives it life. Prayer is what gives your relationship with God life. And prayer doesn't just mean the moment you put your knee on the ground. Prayer happens as you're reading the word of God, as you're studying the word of God, as you're communing with God in whatsoever way of meditation. It is prayer to God. So it's not until you get to church and they said, let's pray. Remove it from your mind of you thinking, that prayer is just a need-based activity of you going to God to just ask him, God, give me this, give me that, give me the third. Because it's not about what you can ask God to give you. It's about the communication aspect of you conversing with God, having to unveil your soul to him, having to have this intercourse between your soul and the spirit of God, allowing the spirit of God to brood into your being, into your personhood. That is how to pray without ceasing. That I'm not trying to go on break for prayers. I'm not going on suspension for prayers. I'm not going on leave for prayers. So there should be no intermission in my praying because scripture says pray without ceasing. Prayer is a lifeline for a believer. You cannot stop praying. So you cannot stop communicating with God. You cannot stop hearing from God. You cannot go on suspension for that. With this, you can actually exploit the power of prayer because it is about you understanding that the power of prayer is in my relationship with God. The power of prayer is not in my acts of praying. It's in the depth of my relationship with God. It's in how much I'm growing to know God better. I hope this video has spoken to you and you're blessed by watching this video and there are things that you've learned. I would like you to lay it out in the comment section which of these points hits you most or which of it resonates better with you. That's a better word. I am Uwe and this is my YouTube channel. Do well to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and help this community to keep growing it is such a pleasure to have you watch this video and be a part of this channel thank you so much for watching and i would love to see you in my next youtube video thank you and god bless Bye bye